it's Shawnee. Welcome back. So today I'm just going to do a super quick get ready with me. I'm going to run some errands and chill out for a bit and then go to yoga. And I wanted to use this new blush that I got from Sephora. It is a Danessa Myricks blush, her flushed balm powder flushed line. Now this is a little duo she came out with. This top one is a mini of the Universal Balm Powder and then here is the new blush shade. So the packaging of course is always super cute with Danessa, my cousin. Um, so I wanted to use this. I already have the other flushed shade so yeah. And I have a couple of these minis. I really enjoy them for taking to work. Um, I really like that. And for some reason, not until like Tracy and I think Jessa told me, uh, I realized that when I'm done with one, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be so upset that I don't have it anymore. And they were like, you can just put the universal, the bigger one that you have, like scoop some out and put it in here. I don't know why I didn't think of that. But I also want to swatch this new blush. It is called It Girl. It looks like a really pretty pink, like a little bit magenta. It'll be interesting to see how this works on me. Can you see that? Let me turn this one off really quickly. So it's really pretty. I think it'll look really nice. Kind of matches my nails a little bit. And I'm glad that it's not like super overpowering. I think it'll actually look good on my skin tone. So I'm also going to use one of my Mothership palettes. I didn't get to use one last week and I've been trying to use them regularly. And I was looking at one of my comments and Jennifer commented and we were talking about the motherships. And so I was like, oh, you're reminding me to use my motherships palette. So I've gone through most of them. Now I'm on like the last two to use and then I'll kind of start over. So this is Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction. I'm going to start with the Pat McGrath eyeshadow primer. I'm probably gonna get another one or two of these during her next sale, which is probably gonna be like today. They just have so many sales, y'all. So just wait for a sale because even her newest um, collection, the Bijou Brilliance or something, uh, that you could use like a code to get like 20% off or something. Like I, so don't pay full price, okay? So I got that on. I'm really actually enjoying it. And I'm going to start with a matte. Probably do something super simple. Probably go in with this matte, maybe this one. And then that shade there is calling to me. So let's get a brush. So this is going to be super quick. So no tons of chatting. But I have been reading a bunch of autobiographies lately. Um, where did this? It started with... Uh, a while ago, I read Lauren Graham's biography. Uh, Lauren Graham played Lorelai on Gilmore Girls. That's what she's kind of mainly known for. And then she was on um, Parenthood in a few movies, things like that. And of course, she's been on the Kelly Clarkson show and I always enjoy her on there. Anyway, I started with, she had two books actually. So I read one a long while ago and then I read the newer one, like maybe last year or something. But recently, I've definitely been on an autobiography kick and um, the one I read first in this like, trend that I'm on is Pamela Anders Anderson's book and that was really good like I I don't remember what made me like interested in reading her book again I think it was from a, a talk show or something I think she was on Drew Barrymore's show talk show and so a while ago and I read her book and I really really enjoyed it it was really interesting to hear about her experiences. I was like surprised that we experienced some similar things in terms of growing up. Um, it was kind of interesting to hear how she ended up in various, like how her career started. 
it was it was cool. I was really interested in it, and I it made me realize that she's like super intelligent. Like she's not just smart. Like she's intelligent. Um, which I really like. I just it made me like drawn to her. So let me know if you've used or if you've used <laughs> if you've read her book and what you think about it, or if you know more about her. Just hearing her perspective, she's an interesting person. And then I moved on to um, Drew Barrymore. <laughs> so I read her autobiography, or hers was more like a memoir. I don't know. Um, I was actually talking to Erica about the difference between biography and autobiography. And then um, I was thinking about memoirs also. So I think I'm right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Biography is... A story of someone's life or a recounting of their life but written by someone else so a biography would be like you writing about my life an autobiography is the person the, the story is about is the one writing it so like Pamela writing about her life and then a memoir I think is more of like an autobiography that's about like a specific time in the person's life. Those are my understandings. Let me know if I'm wrong. I know I have some well-read folks up in here. Um, so help me understand if I just completely got that wrong. Anyway, so I moved on to Drew Barrymore's. And okay, so Pamela Anderson's, it's her voice is very like, low and slow and I mean I think you could actually fall asleep to it it's that very Pamela Anderson voice you know do you know what I mean okay I'm gonna go into this shade here so it can be like tough to listen to in some ways because it's just like Pam can you can you speed it up and can you talk a little louder very just soft right and then you go to Drew Barrymore's book and she's literally screaming. She's like screaming <laughs> in some parts. Like I had to turn the, I was listening to this one. I had to turn the volume down. I was listening to all of them um, on Audible. And I used to read a ton. I used to read books a ton and I was kind of anti-Audible. Um, like, I don't know, for a moment, I felt like it took away from, you know, the experience, but it, it kind of doesn't. Um, and it's like a lot more accessible, especially for folks who are like, um, vision impaired in some way. Anyway, so Drew is just screaming in her book. And... <sighs> Drew Barrymore, like, I actually really like her. I know she's been in some conflict lately because she was going to have her show. She was going to keep doing her show during all the strikes that are happening. And, you know, and that's a lot of craziness. But it was it was also very interesting to hear more about her life. Like, I know that there's always so much talk about her when she was younger and she's from the Barrymore family and everything. But it was cool to sort of hear from her perspective, you know, what had been going on. I actually really enjoyed her energy in the book. It, it just feels, if you know anything about Drew Barrymore, it felt very Drew. <laughs> just like high energy, like doing too much. Um, and just, there are some parts from like, oh, Drew, you just don't know, girl. I'm going to go into this shade here. Like, you just don't know, Drew. Oh. Just like some, some things that I'm like, she could use a little bit more education about that. I think part of it is like when she is being exposed to other like diversity things. Not that I think she's like not capable of understanding, but I think in some ways part of her Hollywood experience has kind of not allowed for some exploration or expansion of certain things but I really appreciate her desire to help and to like be a good person and her and Pamela are really both like 
humanitarians and very committed to a lot of their interests and um, like humanitarian efforts, I can really appreciate that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it uh, with Danessa since I'm going to use the blush. I will use the Blurring Balm in shade nine, working my way through this one also. And I'm just going to use this Linda Hallberg uh, puff to put it on because I don't feel like using a brush and I also don't feel like wetting a sponge. Okay, so I finished those two and then I moved on to Mary Jo Butterfuco and that one was riveting. Like, that was riveting. I, like, I know the story around Joey and Mary Jo Butterfuco and, um, Amy Fisher. Like, I know the story. I've heard the story. I've watched, like, news and shows about the story but I just like to have more information like how like what had happened <laughs> what had happened for us to end up in this space so it, I mean as always everything is from the person's perspective right in autobiographies by her in everything but it was really it was really interesting to hear her perspective and to sort of see see like <laughs> to have more information about her life and how things just progressed and it was just so interesting. I like really enjoyed that one too. I'm gonna go in with the YSL concealer. I really enjoyed that one. I know that um, Amy Fisher has a book. I don't know that I'm gonna read it. Uh, Mary Jo did discuss a little bit about Amy Fisher's life. Um, listen, Mary Jo is a better woman than me, okay? She's a better woman than me. But just to like hear her experience, and I had no idea that she got this like, this plastic surgeon like volunteered to do reconstructive surgery on her face from where she got shot and like there were just a lot of people a lot of surgeons that came in to help her and everything i thought that was cool like that was interesting and she deems joey but fuko as a sociopath it was very interesting it was very very interesting i enjoyed that one and now I am at the tail end of Leah Remini's book. I think I have like a couple minutes left or her uh, autobiography, which is very interesting. Like hearing about her um, childhood and how her mom is the one who kind of got into Scientology and then Leah and her sister kind of followed their mom into it. Hearing about her dad who like it, it's just so interesting. Uh, also I just love listening to her. <laughs> there was she talked about starting her acting career and her initial agent was like you gotta lose that accent that Brooklyn accent and she went to a voice coach and the guy was like don't lose your accent like that's part of your charm so I really appreciate that because I think a lot of times in Hollywood maybe the Hollywood of old time people had to change who they were or are to fit into this mold of what we think people should be and look like Y'all know I can go off on a tangent on that kind of stuff. But I'm so aware of people being told, like, you got to lose your accent. You got to lose some weight. Like, you just got to change yourself so that we can be more comfortable with you. Um, I don't know where that puff is. So hearing her story, hearing how she got with her husband, that was interesting. Um, 
<laughs> she, I feel like she was real about her experience of pregnancy and birth. Just hilarious. Even in the book, so in all of these, each person, each woman has read the book for Audible. Like they've been the narrator or whatever. So it's just really cool to see how that goes. I would say the folks who are most animated have been Drew Barrymore and um, Leah Remini. And then I would say Mary Jo Buttafuoco and then Pamela Anderson. So yeah, I've just been on this kick of autobiographies. I just, I love hearing people's stories from them, even though, you know, I'm sure that some liberties have been taken and stuff like that. I still, I don't know, I like them. So tell me what, what like book journey you're on right now. And if there are any autobiographies you think that I should read or listen to. I think the next one I was thinking of is Selma Blair. Um, I thought hers would be interesting. I, I recognize that I'm sort of focusing right now on like actors except for Mary Jo. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> but once I start with something I kind of just get super focused on it. And then I just stay in that space for a while until like I don't want to anymore. So it'll be interesting to see how long I stay in this space. There was someone else I was thinking about, but I can't remember. Let me see if I have it on my little audible thing. But Selma Blair, I'm just really interested in her talking about her diagnosis. Um, There are some that I'm not really interested in. <gasps> Jennifer Grey. Is that a bio autobiography? That might be. What I learned about her. Wait, am I thinking of the same person? Yeah, Jennifer Grey. So remember she was in Dirty Dance. Dirty Dancing, right? Why I, Why do I feel like I'm not remembering what I was going to talk about? Um, so she was in Dirty Dancing and she had gotten this advice afterward to like get her, get a nose job, rhinoplasty. So she did because like at the time Hollywood and probably still now was kind of against, you know, having larger noses and things like that. And so she got the rhinoplasty thing and I think she also said that some people in her family had gotten nose jobs and like that really affected her career like people didn't recognize her anymore after this nose job that she had been encouraged to get and it just like really did not do well for her career because people were saying she doesn't look the same and things like that and I'm like y'all told her y'all told this girl to go get a nose job what you think she was gonna do she thought it was gonna hurt help her career and it hurt her career and I remember reading somewhere that she was like getting on a plane and, you know she handed them her ID or whatever and the person was like oh my gosh you have the same name as like one of my favorite actresses and Jennifer was like yeah that's me and the hey Rose can you stop thank you and the flight attendant or the person at the gate was like you're not Jennifer Grey how are you gonna tell me who I am <laughs> or who I'm not? Like, wait, come on. I just thought that was crazy. So I'm really interested in maybe hearing more about her experience. Okay, gonna go in with It Girl, which is the newest one. And I'm taking uh, Danessa Myrick's brush, tapping into it. That's a hell of a color. Like all Danessa Myrick's products, like you don't need much, but I do appreciate that. I don't know why Rosé is sitting right here. I do appreciate that you can like blend stuff out to fit more of what you're looking for. I'm gonna blend that and then we'll put on 
bronzer and powder and a lip can be done with everything. So bronzer, sticking with Zanessa, I'm actually going to use her contour balm. Um, I had her bronzer and I completely panned it like a while ago. <laughs> so now I'm just trying to get through her contour so that I can like purchase a new bronzer. So I'm gonna put this a little lower. And I have two of her contours. I just switched that one for this one, which is mm, Deep One. So I have Deep One, and then I have Deep Two, which was that first one that I showed you. Bye, Rose. You not gonna say bye? No? Okay. I mean, you don't have to come back. You can go lay down. I have to do me no favors. Okay, so there is that. Um, I'm going to go in with this NARS um, Soft Matte Powder. Actually, I still have stuff in my makeup bag for when I was in New York. Okay, so here is the one I've been enjoying. This is the shade Offshore. And when I tell you I have like all of them or practically all of them I have all of them because I really wanted to see which ones would work for me and it felt necessary I've definitely got to eat before I go to yoga I'm hungry there is that and I've also been trying to do more highlighter for Jan, Nikki, and Will, and, and Dawn. And I went back to my Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette from Charlotte Tilbury. I think this is from last year. You can see that I haven't really used it a ton. <laughs> Mainly because, no, I've used it a bit because some of the words have um, been blended off. But I'm just not a huge highlighter person. And then there are blushes in here, but I already have blushes that I typically use. So I haven't used it as much. But the other day, I put a little bit on and I was like, this isn't that bad. So I think I will go into maybe this one here. Let's try it. I'm using this refer number four. Still going in lightly <laughs> just because I'm not a highlight person but there's you could see it a little bit right okay look there's nothing but I think also since I have oily skin this is what I tell myself at least I feel like I sometimes get like a natural highlight Okay, let me turn this off. Do you see? No, I don't see it either. Okay, let's go into this one. Okay, look. Okay, I definitely see that one. It's just not as like bold, y'all, but look, I'm putting a lot on, I feel. I really do feel like I just put a lot on. I don't know what to tell you if you can't see it because I see it. What do you think, Jan? Can you see it a little bit? It's there. It's the, you saw me put it on. So I'm now going to go in with some mascara. This is the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. This has been one of my favorite mascaras, but I've actually been really enjoying the Fenty 
hella thick mascara and the most recent one that I bought is the Huda Beauty I think it's called One Coat I'm enjoying that one too I just want to finish this perversion mascara and I think it's almost time to toss it anyway oh somebody remind me to pay the rent on my office Okay, I'm just gonna power through the rest of this and then we will be done. So here is the finished look. Just going to run some errands. Not that I need to wear makeup to run errands. I just really wanted to play with this blush. That makes me think of Pamela Anderson recently going out to like fashion week without makeup and people making this huge to do about it. Like, oh my God, she's not wearing makeup. Oh my God, she's so brave. Let the woman do what she wants to. Okay, so I think that's it. I hope that some of this was helpful, especially to see what this blush looks like. Let me know if you plan to pick it up or let me know your favorite shade of the blush. I really like rosé and brunch because of my cat named Rosé. And I hope that you're continuing to take care of yourself. Please be sure to like the video. Um, I'd love if you subscribe to the channel. Also, leave me a comment. Let me know what autobiographies, memoirs, or whatever you're reading right now. Um, I would love to read them. <laughs> or let me know if you have questions about the ones that I've read. So far, they are all really, really good. I'm just, I, I love it. I'm on this autobiography kick. Maybe I should write one. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.